name's Jenny and I've been in the mission field in Thailand for nearly 15 years now. I started getting a leaflet advertising a YWAM trip, a three week summer trip for students to go to Thailand with YWAM and um, support their work. I found myself stood at the front of this meeting giving a really passionate plea and I'm literally saying, guys, if God tells you to go, you've got to go. And it was at the end of that meeting that the president called me aside and said, Jenny, it's your name on every letter, but is there any chance God could be talking to you? When I finally got to Thailand for those three weeks, we found ourselves placed at a place called Kids Life Ministry, which at the time was an orphanage. I fell in love not just with the kids who were adorable, but more than that, I fell in love with God in a whole new way. Um, and with the idea of saying yes to anything that he asked of me, even if it didn't make a lot of sense for me. This first trip to Thailand, I went back to the UK. Um, I did my PGCE, and it's at that point that God asked me to go back to Thailand. It didn't make sense in so many ways. Everything was going so well. I was living out my dreams. I had a successful career. I had a lovely home. I had all these girls I was mentoring. I had this new ministry at church that was thriving and making an impact. I remember when it got to the point where I knew I was going and I was being told so many times that it didn't make sense to to go without sponsorship, which I didn't have. But again, I was sure that God was speaking. And so I went. So I arrived in Thailand. I really enjoyed um, just sharing life with these kids who had come from just such a different background than myself. Um, some of them were orphaned, but not all of them. Um, more of them were abandoned. Um, some because they were girls, some because the families were poor, some just because the parents just didn't have time for them or an interest in their lives. And um, Some were rescued from abuse, um, some were refugees. We had Nim, and I remember holding her as a young child and marvelling over how anyone could not want her. She, we had a phone call from the hospital to say that she'd been born, and if we wanted her, we could have her, but if we didn't pick her up within a certain time frame, she was going in the river on the way home. This is a gorgeous young lady now who has such a heart to nurture um, and to bless she has been training to um, be a nurse and um, just has such a sweet nature about her. So uh, Kids Life grew and it changed and I had so many kids there. It was, it's exciting. Uh, at the biggest we had 86 kids at one time on site. I now call myself mum to 107 children and young adults and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's the biggest blessing that God has ever given me. So in about 2014 we started having um, some really big trials over at KLM. We lost 90% of our funding overnight. We had um, a lot of opposition to try and stop this ministry and, and to leave and to, to shut down. And, and it was scary. It was really scary. And it was also the most heartbreaking time of my life. Um, there were many nights that I thought I was going to lose my children forever. And there were many people who had said, maybe it's time to come home, maybe this is, this is it, you know, you've done your time, you've done, you've done more than anyone ever expected of you there, and um, you can come home. Um, and I was tempted, <laughs> but I couldn't, I could not leave my children. 
but I also could not leave my God. He had never left me, and he did not speak to me about coming home. Instead, he spoke to me about standing firm, pushing on, and that I was not to leave, but I was to step up into more responsibility. So I did, and oh my goodness, <laughs> out of it, we have a church there. We have um, outreach going into um, local hill tribes and villages and setting up little community groups there and taking aid out to them and teaching in schools. We have this amazing scholarship program where we're now not just working with the children but working with the whole family. And kids' life has exploded into something so much bigger than it was, where the children have become missional and are out there in their schools, in their villages, sharing the gospel. All these steps of faith, of obedience, of listening to him and not to anyone else took me to the place where I became fully myself, where all of my creation was suddenly aligned with God's intention for me and I actually got to live in the fullness of that and it's just something really beautiful and really moving and I will always treasure and be grateful that he invited me to find that and to live in that fullness.